That's how many power cells? <laughs> four four million ninety-six thousand per one thousand of these. I'm making about five thousand.
canceling your order. All of them. All of them. Including all of that first. But it also takes most of them. And strong. It's prioritizing systems, so, you know, it's doing armor last. <laughs> it's just now getting to the armor. <laughs> I was down the walls, which you really should have a, a listing for the windows. I might get a paper script. If I do update the script for that, it'll be next episode. <laughs> I'm dedicating episode 40 to scripting. I could, but I'm not going to.
safe zone. I'm like, we are returning to this safe zone. <laughs> and you are going to stop resisting very, very soon. <laughs> words of Ferguson voice. Stop resisting. In the words of the board. You will be assimilated. Resistance is too far. Defender? What's he defending? My Never mind. So much resistance. 
Something to get this drone like a fish.
everyone uh, reacted accordingly, uh, according to the external force acting upon them, <laughs> which was their desire to escape from Isaac Newton's deadly silent farts. Well, not actually deadly, but potentially deadly. They could be weaponized if mishandled. <laughs> Or if handled properly, I should say. <laughs> I can't stand it. Then again, technically speaking, fire. anything can be weaponized if used wrong. Just like any kind of smoke machine, no. if you use it wrong enough. <laughs> but my soul demands it. Everything I do reminds me of you. Everything I miss it you so much. I miss you so much. In this house full of shadows. In this house full of shadows. Where the rain keeps pouring down. Where the rain keeps pouring down. My window too. My window too. When will the pain proceed to the darkness? From whence it has come, when I'm feeling so good, ain't going down. No more to the well. Sometimes it feels like. I'm going to hell. Sometimes I'm not there. Oh, Lord, front door. But I don't have nothing to sell no more. Being like the spirit. Pushing me onward. There we go. <laughs> now they're working in part. But I tripped and went wrong. Just up again. Well, my soul's back on to it.
Citizen, for I am here to help. We'll try this again, shall we? <laughs>
Plus or minus. This thing and this thing are not part of the blueprint. Who's still doing the projectors? I don't even know how to get this off my screen. I don't even know how I got this on my screen. Oh, I got it. It was all in numpad period.
this thing takes forever to build, because this is at, I think, times 10 grind speed, if I remember right. Maybe it was times 2, but, like, yeah, this thing takes forever to build. Thank you. 
I'm so good at normal physics, I'm just naturally good at quantum physics. <laughs> That's how good at that physics I am. you thinking, you probably want to write out some equation and be like, solve this. No, no, I'm good at real physics, like macro physics, but at the quantum level. <laughs>
Hello, I just saw your messages. How about now? Is that better? specifically what it's called, but they use a uh, visual recognition. So if I fire my thrusters too long, then they'll actually end up seeing that, and they'll come over to investigate. So I have to do short bursts. That's so interesting when I'm trying to avoid smacking into a giant rock. <laughs> to the channel always helps. Uh, that brings in more people. Um, and if you want to donate money, I've got a Patreon page set up. Uh, but otherwise, you know, just feel free to hang out and chat. science topic, so I'll just have a bunch of knowledge. Uh, I play technical Minecraft, uh, as well as sometimes just decorating. I'm kind of good at both. Um, I just don't really do the technical stuff very often because I find it tiresome, rather repetitive. Um, and to be fair, it is tiresome and repetitive, but you know, only so much that can be done about that. Does it seem? Oh, there's the nickel. Just kind of left over in the wall. I managed to miss it first five passes. <laughs>
Ray Cask. It'd be Ray Cask. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, the Reavers do Ray Casting, and that will allow them to actually detect if there is a light source or some sort of uh, thruster being fired. And then they'll go over towards the light source and check it out and see if it was just an asteroid. You know, maybe you could blend in with the silhouette of a voxel somewhere, whether it be a meteor or a planet. Um, but chances are they will just end up detecting you anyways, and then you just kind of either run away really fast or uh, fight your way out. Uh, I'm the type that's able to run away really fast, so I do that <laughs> because it's much easier that way. Currently, I'm just slowly drifting around, but I don't really have very much power diverted to the thrusters. And I'm trying to level this thing just jumps around, even on autopilot. I'm not talking like the laggy kind of jumping around. I mean like you push space bar to go up a little bit, like I just went up there, and I would have ended up possibly being able to smack into that roof up there that I created on my previous pass through this asteroid. Like it is sensitive. <laughs> Because it is very, very powerful. systems of you know regular uh, regular power Surprisingly, 
Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much ore at this asteroid. There's just the one deposit of nickel. Much smaller than the other one.
good thing from another thing you can do. You can share the video with your friends. Word positive on this thing. I am on here. Not much on here, apparently. Let's go ahead and turn on the autopilot. Where's the moon? There's the moon. Yeah, head that way. Head towards the moon. Is that all you got? I've seen... I've seen wolves here harder than that. Not seeing wolves hit harder than that. Hey. 
translate caption. Uh, what games do I like? Uh, well, um, survival games. Uh, mostly the survival craft type games like Space Engineers, Minecraft, uh, Science Factory, Terraria. Uh, those are all fairly decent games. Um, then there's... Uh, Gaining on me? He is gaining on me. Where was I? Oh, yeah, there were games. Uh, then there's games that are, you know, uh, the, the roguelites or. Rogue Whites and Rogue Likes are fairly okay, in my opinion. Um, I'm good at them. I just find them a bit too RNG based, random number generation. Um, I really like MMOs, it's just there aren't very many good MMOs that I can play. Uh, very small budget. Um, no, I don't even have a headset, so <laughs> that gives you an idea of my budget. Um, let's see. There's uh, I know my ship looks like it's in bad condition. But in actuality, it's probably just a couple of spotlights that got shot, and maybe a couple of thrusters. Mostly spotlights. That's where most of the sparks come from. If I can, I'm going to lure this guy back to my. Uh, main ship, and then get him to fly through the, uh, the grinders, because I got nanites and nanobots, and so I can just use all of those to very, very quickly devastate this guy. Uh, let's see. Kinda broadcast. Okay. In that case, I'll return the antenna to 50 meters. Oh yeah, I'm way too far for that broadcast. Yeah, I'm like 52k in. Guy seems to be falling back a little. That's good. And this is the thing that's chasing me. This is what shot me up. It's going to shot went this way. Looks like. Yeah, it's currently traveling this way. Uh, they're traveling at about 103 meters per second. As you can see, they've got a missile turret there, they've got a cannon there, cannon there, I think another cannon there. So they've got plenty of gun emplacements on this thing. That's why I just kind of constantly run from them. Uh, place I'm currently running towards would be this. Uh, I parked next to this station and I built this inside the safe zone and uh, it 
that's just been parked there. Uh, but right there are about 115 build and repair systems. So all I have to do is just pull up to there, and if the Reaver goes up to it, it'll just start collecting him. <laughs> That's why I'm heading over this way. However, currently they're set to walk mode, and only to set them to fly mode. I'll probably want to set their uh, area offset to something a little higher than just target itself. <laughs> Maybe target about 150 meters up, because this thing is... I think this thing's about 40 meters tall? I don't remember the exact measurement on this. This thing is definitely cyclable. Uh, um, so let's see, the other games I like... Hold on. Since I'm luring Reavers, I might as well lure Reavers. Use it as a valuable decoy. Ah, what a lovely beacon. Broadcast on the antenna as well. Another thing to note about Reavers is that Reavers have a tendency to fill their craft with uh, warheads. So there's a good chance that if you try and take one over, uh, it probably will end up self-destructing on you. Uh, especially once you grind their remote control. It's one of the triggers that I've learned of. If you grind the Reaver remote control, it will initiate self-destruct <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, 12 armor and a spotlight. <laughs> That's all they actually took out. 12 armor and a spotlight. Everything else is just damaged or perfectly fine and untouched. Other games that I like uh, include uh, just your average first-person shooter. Um, I'm okay at them. I'm not the best, but I'm not exactly bad at them either. See if I could access my uh, my other antenna yet, but I guess I have to be in its range. It's about thirty kiloliters per second, but it's consuming. And it's refilling at about. 
50 liters. So it's definitely not going up. It's not going up. Um, however, I can do this. A little bit of distance. Don't have any plummet out of the sky. Mm, mild concern. It's going to try and come in from the third DPS. And it's going to repeatedly go in and out of the safe zone as it tries to find the position. If I just tell it collision avoidance here, it'll dodge the station, but then on its approach, it kind of somehow fails to calculate. I don't know why. But without believing the void, it's just fine. Okay. Uh, hours before I actually need to go park it somewhere. I think it's partially caused by just all of the conveyors. It's just conveying so much content that it just 
life struggles. set this to weld before grind, in case the readers decide to show up. I've been known to play games like Final Fantasy XI or, uh, what was another one, uh, Fantasy Star Online, uh, which I believe New Genesis did mention that they recently released a second chapter, finally, for the main game, uh, for their main game. And, uh, or they spot me. Yeah, like that. Or they spot me like that. As I was saying, <laughs> uh, you know, the uh, Fantasy Star Online game recently uh, released some new content. Um, actually, shortly after I uh, had stopped playing it, um, so I might go back to play it at some point. But it's mostly endgame content. Which is great because they don't really have an end game. Uh, it just goes straight from start of the game to mid game and then just suddenly halts. <laughs> and yeah, the end game content consists of the usual waiting for raid bosses.
I am wanting to get back into Final Fantasy XI because uh, in Final Fantasy XI, uh, I've actually got a decently high level, uh, what they call a thief, which is just a rogue. Um, but they're, uh, their primary purpose in you know combat is that they are damage dealers and that they're also very evasive uh, they can dodge very easily so they're used for uh, what they call pulling which involves pulling a powerful uh, creature back to where the party is waiting to ambush said creature um, and, uh, it's, it's a fairly effective tactic. Right here, usually. Oops. Right here on YouTube, usually. Uh, you know, just leave a comment on one of my videos if I'm not actively online, and I usually get around to seeing it at some point. Uh, I do actually check all my messages every now and then. <laughs> Starcraft 2, um, you know, real time strategy, uh, live action. I don't really stream Starcraft 2 all that much because the majority of the audience is just the other team just checking on my build order um, or attempting to 
you know, figure out what my teammates are doing. Um, but that doesn't really help them all that much. Uh, it helps them a little, but not that much. Um, let's see. Uh, and in Final Fantasy XI, I've got a decently high level character, but it's only for one class. And you can just kind of change your class freely in that game. So I've still got all of these other classes that I still need to level up. And that's just kind of a lot of work. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of experience to, to gain there. And, yeah, it has an effect on the economy when a group of players can go all the way to level 99 without ever leaving the third area they visit, or fifth area, depending on where you start. It's like, wow, that's pretty easy, okay. And, you know, it's not all that bad of a amount of time because you're just constantly earning like 200 to 500 experience uh, especially if you've got a power level in white mage it's, it's real easy um, Uh, Fantasy Star Online, uh, got a max level character already, because, well, it's maxed in one class, but it's really the only class I like. Uh, the other classes are not really my style. Uh, I'm playing a Forcer in that one, which is the Mage, and the, uh, the Mage, uh, is essentially just elemental area of effect. And they just obliterate all of their opponents. Uh, and if the opponent is especially resilient, I'll switch to their elemental weakness and just repeatedly smack them with their elemental weakness uh, in all of their weak points. And so it's very nice. The enemies can't really dodge it. There's no blocking my attacks. You know, if I want to attack them, they get attacked. Um, that's kind of what I like about the class, is it allows me to just instantly obliterate all of my enemies. Um, but, you know, at the same time I have to manage my, uh, my mana points or photon points or whatever they want to call them. Um, which, I get them back if I smack things in melee. <laughs> Which is a mage is kind of a dangerous thing because some of the things at uh, level 20, which is the maximum level, uh, the level 24 monsters, some of them can just one-shot you most of the time. Um, especially if you don't have really good armor yet. Um, you know, going to the going into the shop uh, district and checking out the player shops really helps a lot on uh, getting your character equipped with a proper level 20 armor set. Um, and Fantasy Star Online. Uh, at least in Fantasy Star Online New Genesis. Uh, which is the current MMO for Fantasy Star Online. Uh, they've had Previous ones. Yeah, I've had previous uh, MMOs for the Fantasy Stars. Uh, they're actually primarily a MMO franchise.
because it takes up extra computing power to process the sensor. It's scanning for anything that it wants to turn the drills on for. And uh, that's a decent list. But also, in the process of doing that, you'll see that my landing gear on my back end here are now red. Uh, that's because they're off. They don't engage when they are, uh, when, when the drills are getting used. So when they're not needed, they get turned off. However, if they might be needed, like if I'm just drifting through space, they'll be on. So just when the drills are running, really, <laughs> I turn them off. Um, but it's a useful little trick. It saves a lot of time when you're still working with like five drills. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up drilling a hole, and then your landing gear locks to the ground, and you gotta unlock the landing gear, drill a little bit more, unlock the landing gear, drill a little bit more. Let's do that over and over. And that's kind of annoying, so I just put it in the timer to turn off the landing gear when it's not, you know, actually possible. Like when I'm drilling. There's another sensor for detecting whether or not there's a, a character too close to the drills. It'll shut off the drills, but I think that one's off as well. Um, yeah, uh, in Fancy Star Online, uh, PSO as we call it, uh, in Fantasy Star Online, uh, we do get the option of using a gunslinger type class, or if we wanted to, we could also play melee. Uh, and they've got their own uh, benefits and their own uh, combat abilities that they use. Um, but they don't really have the option to <coughs> uh, guarantee that an enemy is going to take damage every time they attack. Um, they actually have to aim, they can have something end up getting in their way and preventing their attack from actually being close enough to register as a hit. So there's all kinds of stuff that uh, the melee and the ranged classes go through in that game compared to the uh, mage class, which, you know, it's just AOE, nuke them all down, and then quickly replenish your, your photons so that you can do it again. That's kind of what the whole game is about, really. It's just, you know, obliterate the enemies. Why? Because they're trying to kill us. Okay, why are they trying to kill us? Nobody knows! <laughs> oh, well, that's... concerning. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... Sega could have done so much better. With this game, and they just didn't. I mean, not this game, not Space Engines, but with um, Fantasy Star Online, they could have done so much better, and they just didn't. They just entirely dropped the ball. It doesn't have any plot that's worthwhile. Um, by the time you start getting interested in the plot, uh, it's over. <laughs> like, that's the end of the game. Okay, you won. Yay! Now you're level 20. Good luck. Don't die out there. <laughs> you got access to all of the areas. Like, well, yeah, but what about, like, the plot? You guys are known for your plot. They're just like, yep. Good luck out there. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> 
You don't have any plot. <laughs> How do you have a game made by the same people who made Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 Plus? No. The same people who made the, you know, the Knights series. Um, which for the longest time was Japanese only uh, publishing. But they eventually brought it to America as well. I don't know about where you're living, but that's uh, that's most of what I know about the Knights story, uh, Sega Knights story. Um, not to be confused with 99 Nights, which is incredibly difficult. Um, it's a... Uh, I guess it would be classified as a MOBA? Massive Online Battle Arena? Um, except it's offline, so it would be a massive offline battle arena. Still a MOBA. <laughs> Um, and so that, you know, kind of causes you to struggle on certain missions, like protection missions, escort missions, you know, the escort missions where you have to protect, like, certain units from dying, those are some of the most difficult missions in that entire game. Just because your character is this unkillable god, and so it throws hundreds of thousands of enemies at you, and then you have to protect this guy who's like level 5. <laughs> You're sitting there level like 45, because you had to keep replaying this mission because this level 5 guy kept dying because of all of the people they're throwing at you. <laughs> And towards the end of the game, it's even worse because they start getting equal to your level. And it's like, oh my god. What the heck? What were they thinking? You know? Apparently, there are people who have beaten the game. But I've got no idea how those people managed to beat the game. Because uh, I could not mathematically find the answer. Like, I was, I was crunching numbers, I was sitting there ready to do everything but, you know, start up a Excel spreadsheet. I could not find what path to take to prevent all of my units from getting wiped out that I had to fix. And they would get wiped out systematically, which is the worst part. Like, I would start losing one group, so I'd go over there to reinforce them, and then a second group would start losing units on the other side of the map, because the enemy predicted that I would, you know, leave to go reinforce the group that I most lost, and then, like, finish losing them, I'll have to try again. And it's like, well, of course I'm going to go over there to reinforce them. You know, they need my help. But... You know, in the process of going to reinforce them, I end up abandoning the other group that I had just been stationed at. That causes uh, me a lot of problems because well, now I have to run clear across the map again just to make it in time to watch as, like, I manage to save five out of, like, a hundred guys. <laughs> And then they go and attack uh, the first group, but in the process of attacking the first group, they would attack the group in the middle and cause the middle group to start uh, getting completely demolished by their overpowered weaponry. <laughs> it's like, how am I supposed to win? No matter what path I take, no matter how well I hold the line, I can't seem to beat the level three stars. You know? 
So I, I don't know how some people beat that game. <laughs> I really don't. I'm baffled. But... It's... Kinda difficult, kinda not. It depends on which mission you're on. I'd like to point out that the marker that reads uh, Blue 64 or Platinum over there, um, that was placed in the center of this asteroid, in case you weren't aware. I know there's quite a few people who aren't as familiar with this asteroid as some of the others. <laughs> Just stay, buddy. Don't be 
some of the throughput. It's still getting processed as fast as I can send it. <laughs> very, very close. There are some guns that can reach me at this range, but this guy doesn't seem to have those guns. <laughs> the other guy is beyond the range of even those guns, so... saying, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that I've got planned for my channel. It's just a matter of, you know, finding time to do it, um, or money, in the case of certain games like Final Fantasy XI, it's a monthly subscription. If 
I can get enough uh, donations on Patreon, then my Patreon could actually support uh, Final Fantasy XI. Which I think was like about $20 a month. And that's for all of my characters. <laughs> Not just the, the main character. The first character is like 12 bucks. And then each additional character would be an additional dollar. But then, uh, you know, there are certain items that you can't transfer between characters. So you can't really use your extra characters to hold everything. Just most things. In Final Fantasy XI, they call them mules. Uh, I don't know what they call them in World of Warcraft. I suppose it would be in World uh, of well, Warcraft as well. Uh, specifically referencing pack mules or item mules. Um, It's a fairly straightforward system once you get to know it. Just figuring out what all of the different nicknames are is probably the hardest part of learning an MMO. <laughs> like, once you know all of the class stuff, like, you know, who's the damage dealer? Who's the tank? Who's the, who's the healer? Who's the, the guy who can just reliably nuke down an opponent that normally is holding back because if he didn't he would probably get himself killed. Or as I like to call them, the uh, backup tank or backup aggro uh, control. For example, if you end up with a party of four black mages, the enemy will have a very difficult time figuring out which black mage to target. So you want all of the black mages to stand together, but you want them to stand in a way that the enemy has to turn to face each one. Uh, tactics like that really help a lot. Mm. Uh, these guys are still chasing after me. I think now, far enough ahead that I can turn on my engine rooms. All of my engines. Bedtime already. 
How long have I been recording? Five hours. Well. Uh, I suppose that is very close to the time of the video where I will want to you know, start wrapping it up. Don't forget that you can vote in the uh, live stream poll. Uh, helps me keep track of at least the people who visited the channel uh, this live stream. Because YouTube does not always function like YouTube should. So it really helps to have a secondary metric that I can use to keep track of that kind of stuff. That's one of the metrics that I use. Now you can see that the cyan um, instead of red, that's because the drills are off. Uh, the camera that I keep using, as well as the sensors for the drills, this is the one for drills off, one for drills on. Uh, you can see here, so since it's a field range, that it actually detects a fairly large area just beyond the back of the, the ship here. But it detects all of this. And it checks it for voxels and grids, stuff like that. And you know, if it does, it will trigger. Where is it? Uh, I think it's. That's the display. That's the thing. That's where is built the dang thing? I know where it is. There's this display. There's this thing. You can't tell me the timer. <laughs> timer. There's the center display. There's the center timer. Aha! There's the timer. Uh, yeah, so that's the one for turning on the drills. So that timer is linked to this sensor. This sensor is linked to this timer. So they're kind of crossing it. But uh, this sensor will also shut off the drills if it no longer detects anything in this region. And that's the great thing about sensors, is you can just hook them up to a timer, and for the most part, it'll do everything you need it to do. You know, you don't even really need to get involved with a programmable block. But the programmables do actually provide a use. Um, there are certain things you can do with programmables that you can't do otherwise. Um, and that's just because the menus are lacking in certain options.
don't seem to be increasing. Or decreasing. Respectively. But they're getting adjusted. Their behavior is getting altered. They're just not registering that they're being altered. Weird.
piano. This is, this is basically the type of stuff that I do in between videos. Is, is kind of go out every now and then and gather yeah, some more stone from the Platinum Asteroid. Bring it back to the base. Deposit the stone. I mean, there's no platinum at the platinum asteroid anymore. I went and collected all that a while ago. <laughs> cargo teleporters working ever so beautifully to teleport all this cargo back. I still got like a billion stone on me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm processing the stone as fast as I'm teleporting it. Oh, I forgot those explode.
Wow. 
option for translating in stream is uh, the closed captions or CC or captions. Uh, you can set those to auto generate uh, whatever language your native tongue is. Um, for example, I've I've recently gotten a lot of Korean viewers on some of my videos, apparently. Um, and I know this because there is uh, Korean auto uh, translate closed captions being uh, detected as a uh, common thing on my videos. common setting. certain that if I were to get rid of most of these stations, is a uh, 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 space pirate station over there, uh, space pirate, actually that's, that's not even an own beacon. Beacon isn't own.
Yeah. The starter pod, the space pod. The space pod is perfect for the private settler who seeks fortune among the stars. It's a uh, 190,000. No, 190 million space credits. But the thing is, if you actually spawn in a space pod uh, on this save, it spawns you a few light seconds away from Earth, which is like 20 km, or no, 20 km would be really short. I think it's like 200 km. It's some absurdly far distance that no one ever wants to try. Because you literally require jump drives just to find a planet. Any planet. That's annoying. Right?
at some point I'm going to want to locate a place to uh, you know, do business. See what I mean about it being responsive? It's very responsive. <laughs> recently arrived. Um, at least once or twice a month I'll check and make sure I haven't missed any that are held for review. Uh, usually it's spam, but sometimes it's not. So, you know, I check it. Um, other than, you know, making sure you use the, the proper closed captions to auto-translate. Uh, it's not the best, but it's better than nothing. Um, I don't normally play the Pandora while recording, so this was a, a bit of a new experience. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of copyright claims on this video, so probably a lot of ads in the replay. 
And if there aren't, then there's just going to be a lot of quiet times in the replay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got a D&D session to get ready for. So I'm going to go get ready for that D&D session. Uh, fifth edition, if you're wondering. Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, there's lovely group that I'm playing with where I'm the Grave Domain Cleric and we are essentially getting ready to find ourselves in a situation where we are very vastly outnumbered and overpowered and uh, we're probably going to have to have our characters run away at some point. Um, With it, I shall go ahead and end the episode here. Um, thank you for watching. Um, again, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, uh, check my Patreon. All of these things help my channel. Um,
reading about these things that keeps the undead. someone to build my own mo mobile app. I think I meant build myself or hire someone to build a mobile app. That's kind of a typo on Patreon's part. Um, but yeah, uh, like I had said, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that. Uh, with well over the six hour mark, despite wanting to not Oh well. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and stay safe out there.